I was talking on mute. So uh, here's uh, our next presentation, Open Source Tools and OpenShift CI. And I'll be presenting. And um, in this case, I'll be uh, doing live presentation because uh, the original slide deck uh, which I uh, recorded was had a couple of um, uh, things which I fixed later. So uh, to me, it's uh, better to share the latest and greatest. So in this case, let me just uh, share my screen. And uh, actually, let me first share my slides uh, in case you want to follow. The slide deck uh, I'm going to use, and let me share my screen. All right. So, first of all, uh, about uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I work uh, uh, as a senior software engineer for Office of Secure in Red Hat. And uh, we sometimes ask to help other teams uh, we, in, some, in some cases which require some uh, help, external help. So in my case, it was um, biometal, OpenShift biometal installer component. And uh, there was originally a pretty um, difficult situation with uh, CI, most test cases and test suites were failing over time. And that's how I actually got into uh, this interesting project and got familiar with uh, OpenShift CI internals. So the disclaimer is that uh, most of this presentation will be uh, provided from uh, a single component perspective, which is a bare metal installer. And uh, I'm not going to probably give you a complete picture of uh, OpenShift CI universe, because uh, like one of uh, previous presenter uh, shared, it's, it's huge. Let's move on. Um, so today I want to uh, review main moving parts of OpenShift CI, uh, PRAW and CI operator. And um, I'm going to look deeper into parametal API and to end test. So in this case, we can go through um, components of this test, look at the step registry, uh, look at the uh, hardware platform we use to run these tests. Uh, and uh, we also look at uh, another open source tool we actively using in this uh, CI flow, which is Ansible. And obviously some Q&A in the end of this presentation. So we'll start from OpenShift CI overview. And the main component of uh, OpenShift CI is a PRAL, which is a Kubernetes-based uh, CI CD system, native to Kubernetes, running on Kubernetes, or in our case, on OpenShift cluster. And the uh, strongest uh, but if it's designed to scale with high number of jobs, with uh, very detailed policy enforcements, and uh, has a seamless uh, GitHub integration. Like we will see a little bit later, it's uh, very flexible, accepting different commands which you can issue from uh, your PR comments field. And, uh, it does uh, govern automatic PR merging. 
So they are response to external events to execute jobs, which can be some either Chrome event or can be some command uh, from GitHub. And the main types of jobs uh, you can see inside browser's uh, uh, pre-submit, which you see that gets executed every time uh, you have any code changes inside PR before merge. Post submit after the code is merged and uh, periodic, which uh, runs uh, on repositories on a scheduled basis. If you look at uh, inside Prowl architecture uh, in connection to our OpenShift CI, it's uh, some event from GitHub uh, is triggering a webhook and there is a hook component inside Prowl, which actually uh, responds to such request. Uh, we also interact uh, with um, uh, end user sharing the final results. There is a deck component inside Prowl, and you can see the uh, Prowl dashboard with the results. Uh, Plank is responsible to uh, starting uh, multi-engine execution for CI components. Uh, Tight is something which you will use for merging the code for uh, final merge if it's successful. Sinker does uh, use some stale jobs and uh, making sure everything uh, it executes without any garbage left behind. And uh, on, on, on this background, you can see end-to-end -end test, our uh, usual design for OpenShift, uh, which gets executed uh, every time in order to have successful merge of the code. The next slide is uh, something which I borrowed uh, from the external source as a reference uh, below. And, uh, uh, this one is uh, something which uh, gives you a very uh, live picture of uh, what you can see, what components uh, are inside Prowl cluster. And by the way, Prowl is a leading edge of a ship. That's why you see uh, some uh, marine uh, picture here with a ship, with um, some other components like sinker cleans up dead jobs, like I mentioned, or blank, or launching a container for each job. So, uh, Prow is just one of the components. It's a, a big, bigger picture, so to speak. Uh, and um, CI, CI operator is something which uh, we interact most inside OpenShift CI system, if we need to create any tests, for example. So CI operator is an OpenShift native tool which automates process of building and testing uh, OpenShift components. And uh, almost every OpenShift CI job is supposed to run an instance of a CI operator. And it's basically uh, when you look uh, inside under the hood, uh, every component Git repository has uh, a uh, CI operator config file and uh, it translates uh, automatically into a uh, Prowl job to execute a certain set of tests. Uh, CI operator both builds images required and uh, run tests for these images. Uh, CI operator config file uh, this is something which uh, is required to create uh, any tests in OpenShift CI. It defines main things, which images will be built to run the tests, uh, which tests uh, to be executed, and which images will be promoted in case of success, successful execution of the tests. As I mentioned before, Prowl jobs are automatically generated from this config file, and uh, it, it's done usually by uh, running 
the following commands make CI operator config and make jobs prior to uh, checking in your files in the, uh, the repository. And the repository itself, uh, I provided link here. It's uh, under OpenShift release uh, CI operator. That's where we store uh, config files. I provided a few references here without waiting till the end of the presentation. So in this case, we can just uh, see the CI cluster used to run OpenShift CI proud dashboard which was actually mentioned before in one of the slides. I'll just quickly show how it looks. I'll do the scale here. So here we have uh, a number of uh, fresh jobs uh, without any filtering, but if needed, there is a, there's all kinds of filtering you can apply in the upper part of this uh, dashboard. We'll look into more details into the tree and CI operator configs uh, in the demo part of the presentation. Uh, and by the way, another useful link here is uh, OpenShift uh, release status. I also presented one of the core components. And uh, last but not least, CI search engine. It's not technically part of the well, but uh, it does allow you to search on OpenShift uh, results. Say if there is certain failure, you can use uh, Regex uh, search partner here and uh, find it within, say, a certain number of days and a certain number of jobs uh, that you want to review. It's very useful for debugging purposes. All right, now off to our bare metal API end-to-end -end test. And uh, first of all, what is it about? This is one of uh, our end-to-end -end tests executed by many, at this point it's already uh, probably 10, 15, or maybe more, OpenShift components and repositories. Uh, it uses uh, standard dev scripts uh, deployment which is essentially OpenShift installation in, on virtual machines, which can be deployed on a single physical server. It does not require any additional components. Uh, by default, it does three masters, two workers deployment. Uh, and uh, it, uh, the Pymetal uh, API test uh, runs a subset of OpenShift conformance tests. Currently, it's, if I remember right, around 170 test cases, give or take. Um, originally, it started from a very low amount, maybe like five test cases. But obviously, it's not all of them because the whole amount will be probably 2,000 something. Uh, the reason why it's not all of them because uh, there are still certain limitations running OpenShift tests in, in this virtual environment in the case. So we choose mostly a core and critical test for to test the cluster functionality. Here's how our test workflow looks. Uh, we have this uh, M10 parameter API test in OpenShift CI and uh, OpenShift KNA test image stream for dev scripts. And we have a packet cloud, which is um, basically infrastructure as a service uh, cloud where you can borrow the server with uh, hardware configuration, whatever you want, uh, and uh, it will be running operating system, whatever you choose. In our case, it's uh, CentOS 8. By default. So for, for the server, we first thing we acquire this provision a packet server. Uh, using, by the way, Ansible script, like we see a few steps ahead. We'll uh, fetch the latest uh, dev scripts image from dev scripts uh, OpenShift repository and copy resources to the server. 
we run DevScape's installation, which is actually just a pure make command with maybe some tweaks in the configuration by end-to-end uh, -end metal API test. And then we run our conformist uh, subset of test cases against the cluster. And in the end, we copy prowl logs and test results uh, back to uh, the system to open shift cluster running CI. And uh, we uh, deprovision like a server using another Ansible script. Uh, and another uh, thing to consider in uh, in this uh, design, we run our these tests and uh, end to end uh, metal IPA is written as a multi stage test, uh, which was introduced literally, I would say, about six months ago uh, by our DPTP team. And uh, the main idea is it has a module test design which allows user to create new tests combining smaller steps. So in this case, step is the smallest executable unit, and uh, then we have chains, and then we have workflows as a biggest element of this uh, multi-stage uh, test cases. So all steps are stored in so-called uh, test step registry, and here's the URL uh, under OpenShift release. CI operator step registry. Uh, and uh, the good thing is uh, it's, uh, it's now includes a pretty extensive uh, help. Uh, the help is provided here on this URL and uh, I believe it was opened already, but in any case, it's, um, it does include pretty detailed explanation of uh, every uh, way you can use uh, Step registry and OpenShift CI in general, with all possible examples of uh, CI operator config files, environment variables, etc. Et so, for multi stage steps, this uh, slide just explains how, how we uh, pass uh, our information between steps and uh, feed some information from OpenShift CI into this step. In our case, it's all governed by uh, environment variables. So cluster profile directory, it's something where we store so secrets for parameter uh, API test. And uh, we use a shared directory to share our information between steps if we have more than one step in a row. And in the end, usually, uh, the final step writes its information or intermediate step maybe also writing information in artifact directory to store our logs and later share it with the cloud uh, and store it, share it with the custom, so to speak, so whoever started this test. End to end metal API steps and a workflow. As I mentioned, we um, design a specific workflow for this. And uh, based on uh, the uh, test step definition, we have three steps. Uh, steps designed to set up the environment. We have test step, which effectively executes test uh, steps. And post, uh, it's something for cleanup and uh, something which always executed even if any of the previous uh, stages fail. So in this case, we get a clean system and uh, will not have any garbage left behind. And here, it's, uh, I, I just wanted to uh, spend maybe a minute uh, looking at packet.net. This is our So this is the interface we use, and in our case we have a dedicated project to run, 
bare metal tests. We're just making sure that I'm very perfect. And you can see there are uh, a few servers already running with a certain configuration. Most of them in the same data center. And uh, we use certain set of tags to um, actually better understand what crowd job actually executing this server. So in this in case of failure, we can debug it using the tags. So now a few uh, things about Ansible, uh, where it is in this picture. Uh, so I will not probably spend too much time telling you what Ansible is, because uh, it's pretty widely known, and some of the previous presentations went into great depth about Ansible Tower. So in our case, um, Ansible is uh, another open source tool which is convenient to fit uh, OpenShift CI environment. And namely, we use uh, Ansible in order to preserve and prepare packet.net server for the test and then clean up and release it. So in this case, uh, we'll proceed to a demo part of this presentation. And um, I have, um, let's see if I have it open right here. Yeah. So here we have some setup command to uh, reserve this uh, system. And uh, here actually how some of our steps in step registry look like. As you can see, it's under this operator step registry. And in this case, it's set up for packet. The path is kind of explains what it does, and naming convention is to follow this path. And um, essentially, every step is a shell script. But in our case, uh, it does have uh, embedded Ansible, which is using packet server module, which is supported by packet.net, and uh, it gets updated whenever they change any of the APIs. So in this case, we are fully uh, isolated from any possible breakage in this case. And uh, it goes uh, reserving the server and uh, reporting the failure. If uh, something goes wrong, we have a notification sent straight to the Slack channel for bare metal install. And uh, similar, we have um, bare metal DS packet teardown commands. Again, similar structure, shell script with Ansible inside, uh, which does teardown for uh, server once we're done with uh, CI execution with uh, bare metal DS test flow. And again, in case of any failures, we'll get a notification sent into the Slack channel. So let's see what else I wanted to highlight here. Oh, and uh, another interesting item in this presentation, uh, the uh, PR test flow, how it looks like from, say, uh, test developer or CI developer perspective, how you interact with these tools. So in this case, originally I have uh, this uh, upper PR, but uh, right now it's it was already merged. So I'll just uh, leave the live one in this presentation. And in this case, um, we have it right here. And I created this uh, sample PR just uh, showcase of day-to-day uh, -day work you may need to uh, perform inside of a component CI. So in this case, we may need to tweak a number of test cases. And uh, let me just uh, kick off this uh, push uh, so we'll see some action 
from GitHub and uh, from browser. Well. So in this case, uh, I made some change. Then um, one of my teammates uh, made uh, another change in the list, and I had to uh, rebase and resolve some conflicts. Uh, for SPR, but uh, for our purpose, it's pretty much uh, irrelevant, which I can just see. Um, what's going on, uh, and um, all I did was just pushing the updated version of my code, and uh, in this case we'll see the uh, automated CI test ex execution, pre-submit tests uh, running here, and hopefully we'll see some results pretty early in a few seconds, because depending on the test uh, case it may take from, say, several seconds till so in this in case of uh, end to end metal API, it will, it will probably take an hour and a half. So we will obviously not wait till the end of this execution, but at least we'll see how it starts. Yeah, as you can see, some successful tests already marked as such, but this is basically uh, checks by uh, format of the files, say, CI corners, etc. Et so the interesting part will be actually some, the end-to-end the -end metal API test, which is still in pending state. And let's see what, how it looks like. So we don't see yet any locks here, but as we go for execution, it will be here, you may, interested to look in artifacts directory in the end or for the purpose of this presentation I can just look at the logs and instead of this pending look at some previous execution which is one hour 40 minutes so if we, if we wait all the way to the end we'll see something like this uh, there's always one flaky test but otherwise uh, most of the test cases which are supposed to run here first and from my counter, it's a green run, so to speak, successful. And artifacts directly in this case have all kinds of logs. And in our case, if we look at the test case logs, it's on the end to end metal API. And every, every step of the test flow produces its own directory in this case. Like it set up, like it tear down. By the way, if you look at Ansible, how it looks like from logs perspective, it's not probably anything interesting because in in the interest of uh, securing our environment, we don't really uh, share too much information from Ansible in the logs. But for the test steps, it's more detailed for actual test execution. So you can see all the test cases uh, started fast and if you scroll down it's probably more details. So this is uh, pretty much uh, or what I wanted to share for today. And uh, in the end of this presentation, you can see a more fundamental set of references. Again, uh, the link to CI steps documentation, which we saw recently. Biometal API steps in the repository and uh, very detailed uh, OpenShift uh, CI Doc is written by our team. KNI deployment for bare metal API. It's I would call it survival guide for CI, and that's how one of the sub sub nodes uh, tells us. And uh, at this point, we are done with uh, my presentation, and uh, I'm open to any questions. Please feel free to type your questions in the chat window.
Thanks, Narin. I was, I was uh, actually, I, I did some dry run of this presentation before in our tech talk, and uh, in this case, it's kind of trying to already note what what probably will be asked in some cases. All right. So in this case, you have my presentation slide deck, uh, which I probably will still keep up to date uh, in case of uh, any new changes in OpenShift CI. It's, it's very uh, dynamic system uh, to a degree, and uh, some new stuff is literally getting introduced, if not daily, but on a monthly basis. So I highly recommend again the link which I shared on the step register because now uh, OpenShift CI team is trying to keep it up to date and if there is anything new, it's usually it's getting documented here. So thank you very much for your attention.